Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is my version of a Czech thread nymph. Now I did a top 5 of grayling bugs uh, last week and lots of people came back and said they wouldn't be without a Czech thread nymph. So this is my version for the grayling. I hope you like it. Without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vice then is a Hanak H450 barbless hook. This one's at size 14. It's on a medium wire in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Simplify. It's the Nano Silk at 12 volt. First thing I'm going to do is get plenty of wax onto this thread. Or silk, should I say. And I want to build up a small amount of thread behind my bead and the bead I'm using today is again it's a Hanak bead it's a Fluoro Plus and it's 3.5 millimeters and as you can see it's a powder pink now you can mess about with the bead colors uh, you get a hot pink uh, an orange even and and they all work it's it's up to yourself but this one I've got particular confidence in it just seems to do a job for me and I think that's all it is it's just confidence so once you've got your bead secured, you can come in with your snips and just take away that tag end. And what I want to do is just take my thread down towards where a barb would be on a barb hook. And as you can see, the bead's not moving. There's nothing I hate more actually than the bead shuffling up and down the shank when I'm trying to tie a fly. So that's why I like to secure it in. Now for the tail, I'm going to be using some of the Simplify Ice Dubbing. Now, it's, uh, it's maybe not the first thing you'd think of, so I'm going to use the pink. And what I want to do is just eke that dubbing out of the dispenser there. And then I'm going to fold it until I've got enough to make a small tail. It doesn't need to be a lot. And what I'm going to do is just take away the ends to make it a bit tidier, dress up to the shank of the hook and catch that into place. I'll bring it all the way down to the bottom. Now it's, it's no surprise that uh, the checks have come up with this pattern, um, not this particular pattern, but you know, the style of fly and uh, I'm just bringing my scissors in at the bend of my hook and I'm going to snip away. By bringing your scissors in at the bend each time you just keep consistency in your flies. Yeah, the, the checks, there, there's no doubt about them. They're one of the best fly fishing teams in the world when it comes to rivers and when they churn something out it's well worth humming in your own box. So, the rib uh, as the name suggests, I'm going to use Glowbrite number 2, which is a pink floss, and I'm going to take off a length of that. Now for a size 14, I find the best rib is this folded four times. So I'll just fold it four times. Dress it up to the hook shank, catch it in. Don't need to be overly fussy. And again, come back to where your tail begins. I'm just going to keep that out of the way for the moment. And the body that I'm using for the fly is some Mad Rabbit Dubbing Plus. This one's from Troutline. It's quite a dark dubbing. It's got little flecks of UV in as well. I quite like it. Uh, the original dressing, I'm afraid... Uh, that's probably in some secret check vault <laughs> but uh, this is what I use and it seems to work just fine now I don't want to dub it on too hard I want it to spike out a bit so I'll just get a little bit of the mad rabbit on it's easy to dub which is handy and then I can just bring that up my body don't worry if it spikes out that's exactly what you want. All the way up. 
Size 14 isn't particularly big, but um, I just find this a great size. It, it works well, it's not too threatening. Now, next, I've got my four strands that are tied in off the pink globe right. Now, what I want to do is in my fingers, I'm just twisting that up to create a rope. Now, when in another life, when I was a tailor, we used to make something called four core thread and it was for sewing buttons on and it's done in a similar fashion to this only you just coated it in wax before you sewed it on and it was used for sewing buttons on great coats and military uniform worked a treat so we're going to bring that up and I've got three good ribs in there and the fourth one I'm going to bring to where the, the bead has a gap I'm going to capture that in with my thread, like so. Once you think you've got it pinned down, you can let go. It will spring back on you because you've got all that twist there. And you want to just ensure, before you cut anything, that it is definitely locked into place. Don't want to cut it and then find it's going to spring back on you. Don't throw this away, it can do for the next bug. Okay, so next then I'm going to just come over this to ensure I've got it secured in. Several wraps, doesn't make much odds. And what I want to do is just very gently rough out my dubbing a little bit more, like so. Nice and spiky. Okay, so there's a couple of ways of doing this. I've seen various people doing it in various different ways. So the way I'm going to show you is probably the easiest. So I've got a little bit of CDC here. Now, you don't, it's not part of the original pattern, but I like to put a little bit in. And I like to put it in on the bottom of the fly. So I'm going to turn my vise, inverted, and I'm going to rip the CDC from the stock and all I'm going to do with this is just bring it over the top the top of the bead catch it into place and then just bring it around once you're happy you've got it where you want it you can come in with that first bit and Remove it. Excuse my fingers. Just taking away the uh, the root ends. While you've got the vice inverted, get yourself some partridge. Uh, you're going to use both sides. So I'm going to take maybe half a centimetre from one side. Doesn't matter what length the feather is because you're going to decide how long you want it. I don't want it much longer than that. So again, I'm going to pull that flat. I'm going to come over, excuse my fingers, and catch in a couple of turns. Again, I can come in with my scissors and just tidy up that. Bring your vise back around. And then the other side of the feather, you can take approximately half a centimetre. Again, don't worry about the length, because you're going to determine. That looks okay to me. And then catch that in as well. And then that can be removed. Of course, the alternative is to create a dubbing loop with your thread, or an actual dubbing loop. Uh, I like to split the thread sometimes. It just depends on how quickly... Uh, I want to get these tied and I'm tying these up actually for a fishing trip upcoming so I'm tying a lot of them uh, and this is how I tend to do it, it's just a bit quicker than creating the dub and loop. Now it, it might not give as good a finish but it's good enough for catching fish. So to finish off then I'm going to be using some Hens 45 and I've got a little bit out of the packet here, you don't need very much. Uh, and what this does is it makes your hackle, if you like, 
just lie a little snugger onto the body of the fly. You can mess about with beads, colours, it really is up to yourself. But as, as many people have alluded to in the comments from the top five video, it's one to have in your box uh, at this time of year, without a doubt. So I'm just going to use some UV resin. And that will finish the fly off nicely for me. In with a whip finish. And there you have my version of the Czech thread fly, uh, specifically tied with grayling in mind, hence the, uh, the pink. Thanks very much for watching the video, and if you're enjoying what I'm doing, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.